<laughs> yes, but I didn't appear out of the picture you go. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Vintage and Classic Metalwork channel. Yes, welcome. Now we get asked a lot to do basic MIG welding uh, tutorials, which for some reason we haven't done yet, but um, it would make a lot of sense to do one. So yeah, in this video, we're gonna take it back to basics, show you a few tricks and tips about the process and walk you around the machine and how we're gonna set it up. Okay, so let's have a look at the machine we'll be using. This is the machine that we're going to be doing our demonstration on. This isn't a plug, it's just what we have in the workshop, it's what we bought. Um, so this is a MIG 180 by Artec and it's got all the same features that any modern good welder will have. Um, so you've got your gas bottle, which you buy separately, but every welder will have a gas bottle. We have our wire spool, we have our uh, wire regulator in there that pulls it through and uh, we have a Euro torch and we have the earth clamp. Um, with every welder you will have a uh, amps and a wire feed. Some of them will be on a stepper switch so you'll have click 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 whereas this one's quite nice it's got potentiometers so you can really dial it in which is a nice little feature. Um, we recommend 0.8 wire so make sure you've got that. This machine doesn't run very well on 0.6. It's a bit jerky, but 0.8 is nice. Um, if you look in here, um, you've got two little grooves in your roller. You need to make sure that that's the right way round for the size wire you have. And this here is a tensioner. So you wind that in and out to get the correct tension on the wire. Too much, you'll just flatten the wire out and you'll have problems with feeding too loose and it won't feed at all. Let's have a look at the front panel of this machine. As you can see, this particular one's also an arc welder and it has a spool gun, but we won't worry about that. It's only the MIG section of the machine we're interested in. So, as I mentioned just then, you have your Euro torch there. You have your earth clamp, which goes into the negative on MIG. Um, if you haven't seen one, that's what that looks like. It's the same on every welder, MIG, TIG or ARC. Um, you have your voltage, your amps there, and you have your wire speed. Now, depending on what thickness material you're working on, this will change, but they should always be similar in relation to where they're sitting. So if you're welding thicker stuff, you move your amps up and you move your wire up. You should never have less wire than your amps. So in general, your wire should always be a little bit higher or even to your amps, especially when using this particular machine. We have a look at the components of the welding torch now. So you have the tip, which is always important. You must make sure it's tight on there. Not too tight that you shear it, but tight enough that it's not going to come loose because that can give you um, juddery wire. Um, you must make sure that the size tip is the correct one for your wire thickness. So this is 0.8 and we have 0.8 wire. You have your shroud, which goes over the top. It doesn't screw on, it just pushes on and the spring is purely there just to hold it. And you must always make sure that this is free of debris. I know that's got a little bit of junk on it at the moment, but that's acceptable. But you, you mustn't let that get covered up and then arc out on the wire because it would just, just stop working. This is your standard type of home welding gas bottle. This is by a company called Albi, A-L-B-E-E. -E. Um, other companies are available. Um, it just depends what your local welding store supplies. Um, this is a 20 litre bottle, it's 3 bar and it is an argon CO2 mix for uh, MIG welding steel. Uh, this is around 65 to 70 pound for a refill and they last quite a long time. You can get these, but in my opinion they're not worth it. If you're doing anything of uh, any sort of substance at home, doing practice and that, you'll burn through that so quick and this is around 15 to 20 pound. So, 
these really are the better option. Um, if you look at your bottle when you get it, some will have a separate regulator, some will be built in. This is a built in regulator and it should be set between 10 and 12 liters per minute. And on the side here, it shows you how much you've got in your bottle. So Tom's gonna to demonstrate how you should be holding your welding torch in like an ideal situation if you're welding on a bench or fabrication welding. So he's gonna hold it, not quite vertical. It's uh, over by about five degrees. And from the other way, it's, um, yeah, this sort of angle. So it's not quite 45, sort of maybe 10 degrees, something like that. And that's how it should be in the ideal situation. So when you're actually practicing, just doing runs, that's what you should try and aim for. And away from the um, actual material you're welding, it should be, say, 10 mil or 3 eighths of an inch. So one of the main mistakes people make when they're striking up the torch is the speed that they travel at. And if you go too quick, you're gonna be really narrow. So with this, what I would suggest is just taking your time. Um, one of the methods that I use is just counting, just a nice steady pace, so like one, two, three, four, and so on. And this way, I can maintain a nice steady pace throughout my valve. Right, I'm gonna run a weld. I'm gonna run at the speed that you sort of should be in sort of most welding um, situations really when you're doing fabrication. So I'm just gonna run a weld on a setting and we'll run through that in a minute and let's see how it looks. So this is the weld we've just um, laid down. As you can see, it's a nice consistent thickness all the way along. Um, and that's because I've maintained my breathing nice and smooth and I've just maintained my speed. You can see that it starts to um, flow out just a little bit towards the end. And that's because it's getting more heat into the panel. This is 0.9, this is standard car bodywork thickness. I'm gonna run another weld now and uh, Tom's going to film it for a welding visor so you can sort of see what I'm seeing, what it should roughly look like. That's the plan anyway. Once again, nice steady speed, even consistency. That's really all there is to it. Be consistent, smooth. Um, any any jiggling or moving that you will do as you're going along will show up in your world. This really is the only key to doing a nice world is being steady, smooth, control your breathing, be comfortable. That's the other important thing is you must be comfortable as you're doing it. If you're trying to do it in an awkward position, you just won't perform a nice weld. Simple as that, especially when you're learning. Um, this is the sort of thing you should be doing in your shed or garage. Um, when you're trying to learn how to weld, just run, just run runs. Or say you're doing box section, you should be welding box section. If you want to do the thin stuff, do it on thin stuff. But adjust the settings on your machine, just practice, 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 there's really all there is to it. Right, these are the welds I've just laid down. As you can see, they are nice and uniform in thickness and uh, straightness and consistency and everything. That's because I was nice and smooth. Um, but what's more important with welding isn't that part, it's the penetration, because that's what holds the material together. So if you have a look on the back, this is what we call penetration. And as you can see, 
It's nice and smooth and uh, nice and even and it is fully penetrated all the way through. If you were welding um, two pieces of metal together, that would hold. Um, I perhaps have got the amps turned up a little bit high for this thickness of material, but it's a good demonstration. So another couple of uh, tips that may help you with this process is what I like to do is have my arm near me, near my body, locked in, and I have a point of contact on the bench. And then when I lock the torch in there, this then, it limits the movement that's in the torch. And any little movement you have will show up on your weld. So if we can reduce all the movement around here, then that will hopefully give you a better weld. But don't be too tense, just gently lock it in, but don't tense and then hopefully that'll give you a nice smooth weld. What I also like to do is transfer the weight from one foot to the other. So being right-handed, I will go from right to left and I will push the torch. And then as I'm welding, nice and steady, I'm literally just slowly transferring my weight from one foot to the other. And these are a couple of little tips that help me and hopefully they'll help you. That's right, and uh, another important thing to remember is always push the weld, never drag it. So don't, that's it. So go forward like that, always push into the wire, into the wire. Um, a lot of first timers tend to drag it and uh, that really isn't a good idea. You, you won't get good penetration. A lot of people get this bit wrong. So, at this point, I just want to do a quick demonstration on what it's like if you haven't got the settings right. Because when the settings are correct, you'll hear like a, a frying bacon sound. It's really nice, a real nice crackle to it. But when you haven't got the settings right, um, like too much wire or too little wire, it's a real distinctive sound. So, at the moment, I've got it set on uh, roughly number three for wire speed. I'm now going to turn it up to around number five. So this is just demonstrating what it's like to have too much wire in this weld. So with that one, that was a really high pitched sound. And what's happening there, there's just too much wire coming out and it's just sitting on top of the metal and not burning enough. So that one's at number five. I'm now gonna to go to a number seven. Again, you can hear that really clearly. That's uh, it's an awful well, and uh, it's not gonna join anything at all. As again, it's all in the sound with that one. So what I'm gonna do now is not enough wire. So I'm now gonna turn it down to like number one. So hopefully you heard that. So what's happening there is the wire is coming out, it's burning and then going back up to the tip and burning and back up to the tip. So it's got the power, but just not enough wire feed to put down a nice weld. Right, I'll do a close up look at these so you can see the differences between the welds. So this is Andy's weld here. As you can see, it's a nice penetrated weld. It's hot enough. The burns are nice and consistent and the edges have wet in. So that's our comparison. So on setting number five, you can see it's sitting quite proud of the material there. And if we turn that over, only a small amount of penetration. Number seven, drastically sitting on top there and it hasn't penetrated whatsoever. So that's way too much wire and there, there's not enough heat going through the material there. And then not enough wire here as you can see, it's very messy with the burn around here. And if we turn that over, no penetration whatsoever. 
So there's your comparisons with wire setting. So now I'm just gonna do a quick demonstration with what it's like to have too many amps or your voltage too high. So we're currently on number three and we're gonna move this one to number five. As you can hear with that one, it hasn't got that nice crisp crackle. It's very ploppy. Um, oh, that's one of the words I'd use to describe it. So we go to number seven now in the settings. Just like we did with the wire speed. And as you can hear there, there's no crackle at all. It's just burning straight on impact and your wire speed isn't there to fulfill the power that it's set at. So what we're gonna do now is now just show you at setting number one. So this is what it's like to have not enough power. So number three on the setting. So this is what we would class as the right setting for it. And as you can see with number five going slightly higher in the power, you know, we probably got a tad too much penetration on that one. Number seven, the sides have wet out completely and uh, it's sunk in so it's not sitting on top of the metal because it's all come through the back there. There's a lot of penetration, far too much for this thin material. And then number one, not enough uh, power. And as you can see, no penetration at all. So this is a really key point that Andy made out earlier. So as your wire speed goes up, your power and voltage, your amps, it has to go up accordingly. So if you've got it on number three for your wire speed, your power, your amps are also gonna be around number three and uh, your wire speed should be slightly above that. So there we have it. Hopefully that's uh, an informative basic beginner's guide to MIG welding. Yes, um, now remember, before we get a load of comments, this is just showing you the very first baby steps of welding. There's all different things that come after this. There's diamond stitching and figures of eights and all things like that, but this should give you enough information to just start welding, being smooth, consistent, learning the bare basics of it. It's, it's the first stepping stone onto being able, being able to weld. Yeah, and restoring your car, or yep. bike, or whatever you've got at home. Indeed. So, hope this has been helpful, and if you liked it, check out our other videos, and more importantly, please subscribe, it really helps out the channel, and uh, yeah, if there's anything else you want to know, please just leave a comment down below, and uh, we'll try and help. Thanks, yeah. See ya.